you guys, you guys, even though you may not recognize it, there is a lot of work that's happening on the energetic side, on the spiritual end. You got the Ten of Swords was the first card that came out, okay? So there are endings in place that are taking place. On an internal level, there are some last minute things that are discrepancies, we could call it, or last minute things that are being lined up, figured out, worked out, ironed out. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, for your moment, for your week, for your year. Who the hell knows? Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. But keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And this is a timeless reading, yes? Um, always lots of great stuff in the Morning Coffee playlist found in the top right of your screen. If you're going to dive through the Morning Coffee playlist, please make sure to pay attention to the dates. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> gotcha. Pay attention to the titles, not the dates. Yes? Because the titles are going to give you information as to or insight as to when this or what could resonate for you in that reading. Yeah? Okie dokie, guys. Um, just a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, I'm having allergy troubles again this morning. I think it's just because of uh the air and what's in the environment and we're getting a lot of rain we did we got a lot of rain for the last two days so probably a lot of mold a lot of pollen whatnot whatever but it's fine we're gonna get through this it's all cute um i don't really have anything to say or to start with i was thinking that i wanted to um i wanted to direct this reading specifically towards something but if it comes out it comes out let's i mean they're really the only thing is that, um, well, I guess we could talk about this. We could talk about this briefly. And then if we want to talk about it more or if the cards pull more of it, we can do that. Hold on a second. Okay, so the month of August may be feeling really weird for us. Uh, it's basically, it's a mass, it's a, it's a big effect of the Lionsgate portal that we crossed through earlier this month. Um, it's, <laughs> it's interesting because there was a lot of work there was a lot of action. There was a lot of, there was a lot going on leading up to the Lion's Gate within like maybe the month of July. For some of you, it was both the month of June and July. Like there was a lot of, there was a lot of influx of activity and energy leading up to the Lion's Gate portal. And then we crossed through it, which was the officially we crossed through it on the 8th, I believe. Um, according to some of the information that Gigi Young puts out, the uh, the, portal, the portal actually closes around the 12th um, or something like that. I don't really know. But um, we went through the portal and then everything just kind of like stopped. I mean, I know personally this month has been, uh, this month has been strange, but only compared to the last two months. Like I said, there was so much work that I, at least I was doing personally, or there was so much drive, so much ambition, so much that one that I, I was consciously aware of that I wanted to do. Like part of, like part of my, my plan, like part of my, part of my days or whatnot were planned like two months ahead. You know, I knew I, what I wanted to do in June. I knew I, well, I knew what I wanted to do in, for July. I knew what I wanted to do for June. Yeah. And then August came and it was just like dead, dead air. I was just kind of like just sitting there. I've just been sitting here, uh, I mean, working, yeah, but um, feeling like in a little bit of a limbo space, especially compared to the last two months. And that's kind of, that's pretty par for the course right now because what's happening is we've crossed through the portal and now um, I believe there's uh, uh, the, the, well, and now we're kind of moving forward, but there's a lot of, there's still a lot of healing, a lot of energetic healing, a lot of energetic clearing that's happening. And so many of us are just, I mean, I know I am personally, we're just really needing to, to rest, uh, remain with ourselves, stay focused, meditate, work on keeping our minds clear, work on keeping our energy, our energy space, or um, our energetic bodies, uh, our just our energetic space clear um, as a lot of situations circumstance kind of work their way out. Many of us have been experiencing like sleeplessness. 
uh, I know restlessness. I know I've been having trouble falling asleep, not necessarily staying asleep. Um, well, any more than usual, but let definitely trouble falling asleep. Uh, and interesting dreams. Um, and many of us could be experiencing strong dreams or weird dreams or very vivid dreams. Many of us could be, I, aside from not being able to get to sleep, um, if we do get to sleep or if you are sleeping, still waking up feeling very tired, like you haven't rested at all. This is all because there is a lot that's shifting and changing for us as we move forward in the next stage, the next phase of evolution, of ascension, whatever you want to call it, okay? There, there's a lot that's happening um, in the spiritual realms, in the energetic realms, that's helping us to make this transition, that's helping prepare us for an upgrade and all that good stuff. Hold on. So yeah, that's a, a big part of what we could be experiencing right now as a collective, okay? Um, I don't necessarily want to do like a full reading on it. I don't feel like it's necessary to do a full reading on it just because um, it's a transitional period. You know, there's this is like one of those limbo periods or those like blank spaces where you do a lot of work preparing for something and then you cross through and <laughs> you have to just, number one, you've got to take the time to recover, to recuperate, to rest and to heal after doing so much work or being so active, especially on an energetic level. But then also this void space is one of those spaces where it's like, okay, okay guys, you've done your work, you've done your part now, sit back and let us do ours, says the universe, right? Because when it comes to these upgrades, these energetic shifts, working certain things out on an energetic level, working certain things out on a spiritual level that prepares you for the next journey, the next step, there really isn't much that you can do other than just fall back and let your guides, let the universe, let like the higher beings, whomever it is, let them do the work that they need to do on behalf of you. Okay, so if you're feeling really tired, if you're feeling really lethargic, if you're feeling really blank, that one is coming through very, very strongly. I mean, I know I've been feeling that way, not completely blank, but just like this really is almost, I, I want to say no motivation, but that doesn't even feel right because I am motivated. I want to do things. I want to be here for the collective. I want to channel the energies for the collective. I wanna, you know, do, bring forward the readings or the understandings that's necessary, but it's not ready yet, or it's not necessary yet. This is one of those in-between blank spaces where it's best just to stay calm, cool, and collected. Work, stay in as much of a med meditative state as possible if you meditate. Uh, or, you know, however it is you meditate, work on that, focus on that, work on keeping your mind still, work on remaining open and work on just if you need to rest, if you need to fall back and just heal, then do that. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So th good. Excellent. Glad we got that out there. So we're going to get into this. Um, I'm just going to do a general reading for your day, for your moment, whenever you catch this reading. I'm using the Tarot Mucha. Yes. And then um, we will be getting some clarification, most likely from the Los Carabeo deck. And then, of course, we will cross the Oracle Bridge when we get there, if my nose will allow me to, good lord. Yeah, guys, there's definitely a mold problem. Um in this space right now and it absolutely has everything to do with how much rain we're getting at the moment and just how humid humid it is like it's it when you really think about it uh this is a tropical atmosphere there's a lot of moisture there's a lot of humidity uh it, it rains a lot and so mold grows and look at this look at this you see my sage here i don't know if you can, how well you can actually see it but you see it you see how it's growing these little green mold spores. That's probably why my nose is so fucked up right now, but that's okay. <sighs> we'll get through it. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. I'll figure something out. Let's get into today's reading. Yeah, just the reading for this moment, for this day, for whenever you find it. Yes? Here we go, kids. Oh. 
high spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, places, circumstances, and... Huh? Uh, and whatever <laughs> in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Um, you guys... There is a lot happening in the collective right now. Whether you are aware of it or not, consciously, there is a lot. I, 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 many, As many of you know, when I channel for people and when I connect with people energetically, I often see colors first, which help guides me as to where you are, what could be going on. You know, it gives me a point of reference to kind of understand a little bit of what's going on in the energies for you to begin with before I dive in, right? Before I really dive in. And often when I do morning coffee here and I'm, you know, starting up and praying and all that stuff, I collect the energies and then I breathe it in, right? And then I exhale it back out. And when I exhale it back out, I direct it into the deck so that I'm pulling on the energies for the collective. And as I was doing that, I saw yellow first. And then as I continued to exhale, it became this kaleidoscope of different colors. It was actually really awesome. But... As this was happening, I heard spirit, my higher self, whatever, say, this is for the collective. And I was like, what the, f like, yo, that's a lot. So spirit says, we say all this to say that there's a lot happening for the collective right now. And it's all on an individual basis, okay? Everybody's situation is going to look different. Of course, there are some commonalities, fatigue, uh, crazy or weird dreams, just feeling I don't want to call it unmotivated. I want to call it blank, just feeling like a complete blank slate, not really having any ideas, not having any real direction right now. That's fine. But that's because there is so much that's shifting for us internally at this moment. Okay. And I want to say, I want to say for a lot of us here, our hard work has, is paying off and we're starting to see the results of it ex, like externalized. It's pretty interesting. Let's give this five shuffles, yeah? One. General reading for the collective. Bah, this is two. This is three. For the collective. This is four. The main thing that I'm seeing right now for the collective is a collect excuse me, is a, a, a collection of orange, yellow, and green. This is five. Uh, orange, yellow, and green. Orange being the sacral chakra, yellow being the uh, solar plexus chakra, and green being the heart chakra. So, for the collective, the focus right now is not on the root chakra. And I feel that specifically because the root chakra, I feel like we previously done the work to get the root chakra to be balanced. Okay. To be in a good place. Um, sorry guys. Uh, and that was in terms of Feeling into your body, I'm hearing specifically also finding your identity, grounding and rooting your identity or the truth of yourself into this reality, okay? Into this physical body, into this physical incarnation. And now we're moving up the ladder, okay? So now the focus for the collective is green, I'm sorry, is, uh, yes, orange, yellow, and green. Now, all of this is in service of healing and balancing our heart chakras. Sure, that seems to be the ultimate goal here. The heart, the heart chakra is the fourth dimension, okay? So this is really where we are all kind of collectively ascending to 
if you are on this path of ascension, right, which if you're watching this channel, you most likely are, unless you're some sort of spy out here trying to keep tabs on me. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're all working on those of us here that are connecting, that are really vibing with these messages, and not just here on my channel, on many other channels as well, right? Because it's all interconnected. But we're all either shifting into fourth dimensional consciousness or fifth dimensional consciousness. Um, and so the root, what I'm hearing is for the collective, is that the root chakra is already sufficiently, <laughs> what I just wanted to say was already sufficiently baked. <laughs> Okay, but I think what spirit means by that is it's put together already. It's sufficient. It's whole. It's clean. It's clear. You're good. You're good there. You have a strong sense of self. You have a strong sense of identity. You also have a strong sense of sovereignty, okay? That also comes from your root chakra. Now we're able to move up the ladder and start identifying discrepancies or, or misinterpretations also I'm hearing, interesting, within the sacral and the solar plexus, which then, I'm sorry, sacral and solar plexus, which then once those get into alignment, those get in balance, then you're able to move up to the heart chakra, which is where you, the fourth dimension, which is where you really start to learn the, le the, the lesson of love, right? The lesson of unconditional love. From there, you move. Once you get that balanced, you move up to the throat chakra, which is the fifth dimension, where you start to learn the lesson of wisdom, right? And then you move up to the sixth dimension, which is the third eye chakra, where there is only unity. Okay. Once you move past the fifth dimension up into the sixth the dimension, there is no such thing as separateness any longer. And that is also why if you're following the path of self-service versus the paths of service to others or service to God, source, creator, you can't move past, quite frankly, you can, I, I mean, you can't move past the fifth dimension. I even question whether you can actually really, well, I think they kind of, if you're, if you're on the path of service to self, you kind of skip the fourth dimension because the fourth dimension is the dimension of love. And those who really align, really, 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 really work on aligning with the path of service to self, which by the way, like I said in the past, that is a very difficult path to walk because it takes strong, strong focus, okay, uh, on self. Um, and anything that takes you out of that focus will shift your alignment and then you kind of have to start all over in some cases or it may seem that way. But you can't, you can't get past the fifth dimension because number one, you're skipping the lesson of love and many people or many individuals, those individuals that are really on that path of service to self are on a path of domination, are on a path of might is right. And they completely reject the lesson of love because they think love is meaningless, love is weakness, love is, is pointless, right? But also, you cannot pass from the into the sixth dimension on that path, the path of service to self, because the path of service to self rejects the idea of being part of a collective, of being one with source, of being a piece of whole. It rejects the idea of unity and, and only recognizes separateness. Therefore, you can't even get into the sixth dimension because the sixth dimension is a, is a dimension of unity. Okay. Woo. Okay. Um, I forgot where I was originally going with that, but there's that part. <laughs> cool. So let's get into the cards for today. Yeah. What do we have for the collective, please, Spirit? What do we have for the collective, please, Spirit? Well, that's good. Definitely like to see that first off. Okay. Now, this is a big part as to why we're in this limbo, though. Ah, okay. Overall energy, you do have the Eight of Pentacles. And the one thing, what I, you guys, you guys, you guys, what I really want to say here is, even though you may not recognize it, even though you may not be consciously aware of it, there is a lot of work that's happening on the energetic side, on the spiritual end. And for some of us, even, we are still doing some of that work. There are still, what I'm feeling here, okay, sorry, Eric, don't get ahead of yourself. You got the Ten of Swords was the first card that came out, okay? So there are endings in place or that, are, that are taking place. 
And what I'm feeling here is that there is there, on an internal level, there are some last minute things that are discrepancies, we could call it, or last minute things that are being lined up, figured out, worked out, ironed out, right? And that's also translating for some of us into certain things happening in the physical, externally, that we are taking advanced steps towards is what I'm hearing. Now, taking advanced steps towards, what does that mean? Well, if you were to look back on your personal journey, look back at the person that you were six months ago. Let's, 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 let's leave it there. Look back at the person that you were six months ago. Now look at the person that you are today and look at the boundaries that you're holding, the perspective that you found, and any sort of changes in character or belief system or uh, uh, personality, alignment, and all that stuff, right? There are certain steps that you are taking now, certain things that you are doing now, certain things that you are saying now, certain things that you may be going after now that you wouldn't have necessarily gone for, taken action towards, done in the past. And that is a, a direct effect of who you are now, who you have grown to be up until now. And so even though a lot of this work is still being done on the internal, what I'm picking up on for the collective is that there are certain action steps that you are taking in the external right now that are wildly out of character for the person that you used to be, or at least in terms of the person that you used to be. And that to me, my dear, is not a bad thing because it's bringing an end to certain toxic, destructive, rough and tumble, awful, just just bad situations or just situations that have been painful, that have been uh, excruciating, that have been tiring, that have been draining, like whatever. You're basically bringing an end to this stuff. Underneath the Eight of Pentacles is the Seven of Swords to the Four of Pentacles to the Five of Pentacles to the Devil. There you go. There you go. You're working on ending these things, okay? This Seven of Swords is the deception. Four of Pentacles is holding on to things. There could be people that are holding on to you, trying to keep you uh, in line, in alignment with them. Okay, there are there are codependent situations that you are releasing yourself from, and all of this, like this, is literally, this is literally breaking down, stripping away the layer after the layer after the layer that covers up the truth of the situation, which is the devil, toxicity, codependency, addiction, whatever you want to call it, okay? Also, you could say it's this Ten of Swords energy. So stripping away layer by layer by layer until you get to the root of it, the devil. Underneath the devil is the Three of Swords, but then underneath the Three of Swords is the Ten of Pentacles, okay? So that to me is saying, you guys, the lesson is being learned, Ten of Pentacles. The lessons are being wrapped up, okay? You're, you're, you're able to, over this process, right? And what uh, over this process leading up to this last Lionsgate portal, now moving forward from that, you are able to strip away one layer, that uh, one deceptive layer, to another deceptive layer, to another deceptive layer, to finally get down to the root of the, the situation, right? To finally realize what the pain, where the pain is coming from. And I want you to look at something very specifically. I didn't do this on purpose, but you see how I just picked up this three of swords? It's in reverse now. Because now, now you know where the pain, the heartbreak, the destruction is coming from. The devil. You are seeing the devil for as it truly is, or the toxicity, or the codependency as it truly is, and you're releasing yourself from that. Three of Swords in reverse to the Ten of Pentacles. Lesson learned. Lessons completed. Lessons completing, okay? But now, of course, that is kind of leading us, leaving us in a little bit of a void. Seven of Cups to the Two of Wands, okay? Seven of Cups to the Two of Wands. You don't really know what it is you want to do. You don't even know where it is you're really going. You're really going. It feels like this is kind of the haze, the Seven of Cups. It might be a little bit of an energy of the dust needing to settle, similar to like a tower energy, okay? Needing to make a decision on how to move forward, but maybe not even not knowing how to just yet. There may be some emotional, like I'm, let me tell you something. Let me tell y'all something. There's some shit popping off in my life right now that has me feeling some type of way, okay? 
uh, and it's an ending. It's a closure. It's a closure of a toxic attachment. Um, and I'm kind of struggling with it a little bit because of the fact that it seems to be consuming my energy. Um, in, in the, to the point where like, where I sit down and I'm trying to meditate, I'm trying to clear my energy. I'm trying to, you know, this, that, and the third. And it's like, it's like consuming me. It's all I can think about. Now, part of that is the energy of the other people involved, because I've noticed personally, as we've all gone through this big collective upgrade, I've been, I've been noticing how on point my intuition has gotten like literally over and over and over again, constantly, it keeps getting proven to me like I'll start thinking about someone or I'll start feeling through a situation and all of a sudden it happens like it's right there in front of me you know um it's just it's crazy it's crazy but so I'm, I'm picking up on more I'm understanding more but I'm also so it's the partially the energies of the other individuals that are involved but it's also my own energy because I also like I have my own point of view in the situation right and I'm trying my hardest to stay balanced Temperance is the next card that's come out here on the table. I'm trying my hardest to stay balanced um, and it's kind of upsetting me because it feels like it's consuming me. But what's happening is I'm releasing it. I'm working through the energy. I'm working through my own feelings about the situation. I'm working through whatever is being projected onto me by the other people that are involved in the situation. You know what I mean? And I'm a fucking empath. Yeah, I can feel it. Anyway. I need to blow my nose. Hold on. Anyway, <laughs> the next, so, so the next, so I, I say all that to, um, to say that's why you might be dealing with this seven of cups type energy here. There might be some, some last roundup of emotions that need to be handled, that need to be dealt with, or there's just a last, there's just a lot, there's just some stuff that needs to be cleared out of the way before you can officially make a decision in how you wanna move forward in the next phase, right? So this is very much like Seven of Cups, Two of Wands is very much the type of energy that has me here professionally sitting here thinking, gosh, what do I wanna do for the collective? Like, what is there really to talk about? Because it doesn't feel like anything is solid enough to really talk about it, you know what I mean? Okay, excellent, let's move forward. Because there are still some more cards here on the table. Like I said, we do have temperance. All right. So this is patience. This is divine timing. Yes, I know. But also it's, it's the energy of, of working things out, of balancing things out, balancing these, this like last ditch, this last ditch effort almost to balance out and to bring the, the, the toxic cycles and circumstances to an end. Yes. There's one last card here that's fallen out face down. It is the high priestess. Um, so the high priestess is actually coming through with a message and what she feels like, what it feels like she's saying here is just allow me, the universe to work things out for you. There isn't too much detail. I mean, there are many of us that are sitting here saying, what, what do I need to do spirit and look kind of looking for details. And it's often when the high priestess come through and we're like demanding details from the universe. It's often when the high priestess will come through and be like, I ain't telling you shit. Because you strict, you strict, this is a strictly a need to know basis. You have everything that you need in front of you right now. Work with that. And when we're, when, when it's time for the next phase or it's not time for the next piece of the puzzle, don't worry, my child, you will get it, but I'm not going to give it to you just because you're demanding it from me. It does not work that way. Right? <laughs> okay. But the high priestess is coming through this time saying there really isn't much to tell you actually, because everything is so up in the air right? Because there's so much that's actually really shifting for us. And what is shifting is uh, what I'm hearing is, is shifting on an energetic level. Okay. Internally, the shift is happening internally. And then over time in the future, it will, it will start to, ex to work its way out and to reflect itself in the external. But right now we have to go through the physical, the internal imbalance uh, and rebalancing first before we can get to the external part of it. And so that's why the high priestess energy is coming through here saying, and she came out face down saying there really isn't much to tell you right now. There's a lot of unknown. And yes, that is exactly how some of you are perceiving it, perceiving of it. What I just got was a flash of an individual standing in their energetic space, 
having done their work, okay, having been being having been on the up and up here, right? Like you find yourself on a really positive end of this big shift. But there's a lot changing around you, and that could mean that some things could actually end up not going in your favor. Ugh, don't let me say it. no, don't 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 say it that way, Eric. Not going the way you initially had wanted it to. And in some cases, it's going to look like it's a destruction, it's a disaster, this isn't working. But that's ultimately okay. Because ultimately everything's gonna work out anyway, but it just may not work, look like, or it just may not work out in the way that you expected it to look like. I just heard chaos. This is the this is the creative chaos of the universe that we're experiencing right now. There is no telling how things are gonna land. The only, and that is why it is so important for you to make sure that you focus on your alignment. Don't focus on whatever else is going on around you. Don't focus on how the universe is working on your behalf. Don't focus on that. Just focus on your alignment. Focus on what it is you want to manifest, where it is you want to move forward, what it is you're being called towards, what it is you're feeling inspired towards. Just focus on that and allow the universe, the unknown energy, to work on your behalf. Yes? I did just see 333 on the counter as I said that. Boop! All right, cool. <laughs> All right, guys. I definitely want to get into some clarity here. So we're going to go with the Los Carabello deck. Yes. Five shuffles. Here we go. One. I think I want to clarify all three of these cards since it's not much. This is two. So we're going to look at the Ten of Swords, the Temperance card, and then the High Priestess. This is three. One at a time. And just get some extra clarity. This is four. Oops. And this is five. All righty, y'all. So, first things first, at the bottom of the deck, we do have the Wheel of Fortune, okay? So this is exactly what I was talking about in terms of don't worry about the external, don't worry about how things are working, how the universe is working things out for you or on your behalf. All you need to focus on right now is your alignment. And that's what I say all the time when the Wheel of Fortune uh, shows itself. We have no control over the direction of the spin, the speed of the spin, or where, this, where the wheel stops in its spin. The only thing we have control of, of, of or control over or control of is our alignment in relation to the wheel and if we make sure we stay in a positive alignment we will get a positive outcome but if we allow ourselves to slip into that energy of negativity of worst case scenario of woe is me of nine of swords of five of pentacles of four of pentacles that kind of energy that's a negative alignment we're going to get something negative out of the wheel of fortune no matter what you're facing right now Make sure that you maintain the alignment of what it is you wish to manifest. What it is you wish to co-create with the universe, okay? That's on you, all right? I don't mean to come up here sounding like that, that uh, an authoritarian or anything like that, but that shit's on you, all right? Ain't nobody else got, is that authoritarianism? I don't know. Um, whatever, that shit's on you, <laughs> okay? Like, I can't do anything, anything about that for you. All I can really do is sit here and give you a, a, an interpretation of the energies that I'm channeling. It's up to you to maintain your alignment, okay? Excellent. Let's talk about the Ten of Swords here. So, please, Spirit, some clarity on the Ten of Swords for the Collective. Just some clarity on the Ten of Swords for the Collective, please, Spirit. What is this Ten of Swords? Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Um, shit. There are some last ditch. Ooh, honey. Oh, okay. Um, I might sneeze again. Uh, but what you have here is the page of swords in reverse with the knight of swords upright. Okay. Uh, you do have one card that's fallen face down. I'll get to that in a second. But at the bottom of the deck, you have the Eight of Cups. Um, oh, fuck. Hold on a second. 
I look y'all, this is some bullshit, okay? This is literally some pettiness, petty arguing, immature mindsets, immature words, immature actions. Uh, this is, and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely seeing two sides of an equation here, okay? We've got one side of the equation that's stuck in the third dimensional energies, that's stuck in the, uh, I'm hearing empowerment, but empowerment from a negative point of view. There's a level of empowerment that, that, that is being justified in the matrix. Oh God, I hope this is making sense. But if you're experiencing some sort of um, drama with people around you that are coming at you six ways sideways, what's happening is they're stuck in the matrix and they're still under the influence of its, um, what's the word I'm looking for, of its intoxication. And it's almost as if they're getting pumped with this drug of intoxication that's coming from the matrix. And that's causing them to fight for it. It's causing them to fight for their stance. This is literally a last ditch effort by the matrix or by uh, dark entities or negative entities that have, that have formed attachments to certain people that, are, that they're feeding off of to get you to stop you from leaving the situation, to stop you from separating, to stop you from unplugging. And then here you are fighting back, Knight of Swords. One card fallen face down. The moon in reverse. Y'all. Y'all. This is excellent. This part of the situation is not excellent. Neither is this. The Page of Swords with the moon in reverse. Both of these in reverse. Neither, this is not good. Okay, so the individuals that are on this side of the equation, you know what? It's not even worth the argument, but I know why you're, you're why you're fighting back because you see you see through it. The positive aspect about the moon in reverse here is that one side of the equation completely through sees through everything. The negative aspect of the moon in reverse is that the other side of the equation is caught in the illusion and is actually fighting for the illusion. And thus we have somebody walking away. Eight of cups, because they are not doing this shit anymore. Four of cups, absolutely fucking lutely not, queen of swords. And the reason why you can stand there and say absolutely fucking lutely not is because you are quite solid. Four of wands, ace of swords. Truth, integrity, honesty, ace of swords. Four of wands, spiritual foundation. Self-sufficiently, see, knowing yourself, having your own self rooted and grounded in a deep sense of who you are. That's that root chakra energy, right? That's that sovereignty, right? To stand up and say, fuck you. I know what the truth is here. I know who I am here. I know where I stand in relation to this bullshit, this malarkey. You ain't gonna sway me. Why? Because I've been doing my work, <laughs> not to sound incredulous or anything, but like you might want to go do that before you step to me with this bullshit ever again. And thus, ooh, underneath the Eight of Pentacles, the world, to the Six of Cups, the end of the past, the world, the Six of Cups, right back to that damn Ten of Swords, to the Six of Wands, ooh, to the Six of Wands, to the Queen, to the King of Cups. Look at this, you guys. The Six of Wands is the victory. The King of Cups is the representation of the emotional maturity. Why? Because you've learned from the situation. Seven of Pentacles, you're not doing this shit any longer. You finally understand where it is you went wrong for some of you or where it is you've been continually doing something the same way over and over again, expecting a different result. But now you have the emotional maturity, the emotional fortitude to recognize that that needs to end. That nothing is going to come out of it. That you are actually going to be much happier and much better off with the end of the situation. Boop. Hey, don't shoot the messenger, okay? All right, 
Excellent. I like this, you guys. Uh, let's move forward. So that was the Ten of Swords. Next, we're going to look at Temperance. More coffee, please. <laughs> All righty. What is Temperance for the Collective, please? Spirit, what, what guidance or um, what uh, clarity do you have for the Collective in terms of Temperance, please, Spirit? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Queen of Pentacles. So what Temperance is representing for the collective right now is the level of balance that's being brought into the situation. Clarifying temperance, like I said, you have the Queen of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Underneath that is the, the Wheel of Fortune. Back to the Seven of Cups, to the Page of Pentacles, to the Fool, to the High Priestess. Okay. Um, so, temperance is representing the balance that's being stricken here, all right, in your life. Temperance is couple or is clarified by the Devil the Nine of Pentacles, and then the Five of Swords, okay? So uh, there is a balance being stricken here in terms of toxic or codependent situations, just like low vibrational situations, right? And I, I, what I really want to do is I really want to put this Five of Swords, I want to sandwich this Five of Swords between the Devil and the Nine of Pentacles because it's literally an individual standing in their sovereignty, in their independence, the Nine of Pentacles is the is literally a representation of sovereignty, right? Being independent, being good on your own, being self-sufficient, being able to think for yourself and come to your own conclusions for, in terms of what is best for you in your life, okay? Uh, so you're standing in your sovereignty, looking back at the devil and recognizing the lose-lose situation here. Like in some cases, some of you are realizing that it's not even worth the fight. Even though you have this, you may have this fight going on, Page of Swords in reverse versus the Knight of Swords upright. You're also recognizing that it's really not even worth the fight. So you may want to pop off. You may want to let them know about themselves. You may want to rip them a new asshole. You may want to, want to, you know, twist them up left six ways sideways. But is it really worth it? No, probably not. Because ultimately, what's helping you to bring this balance into your life is a recognition of your worth, Queen of Pentacles, okay? And that is how the universe is shifting things around for you. The reason why you're even standing in this situation right now, the reason why you're standing in this situation as the Knight of Swords with other individuals or other energies coming at you as this Page of Swords, the Moon energy in reverse, is because of the work that you've done on yourself is because of the understanding of what it is you what it is you have to provide to the situation queen of pentacles and because of you standing in your sovereignty and standing in your worth and not giving in to toxic low vibrational situations that just drain you any longer and that's also the vibration that you're standing in that's allowing the universe to shift things around for you so yes, it is a little chaotic right now. Seven of Cups. Yes, you may not exactly know how to move forward. Yes, there may be a lot of emotions that are coming up for you right now. But you are about to step into a whole new reality. Okay. So Temperance is here. Balancing that out for you. And that's why you need to remain patient. Next, I want to go to the High Priestess to clarify that. Yeah? Excellent. So let's clarify this queen, this high priestess energy. Yeah, what does the high priestess want to say for us officially? What do you have for us, high priestess universe? I kind of wanted to stop right there, but let's see if there's anything else that wants to come through. Okay, anything else, high priestess universe? Okay. Okay, excellent. At the bottom, yikes, at the bottom of the deck, we're back to the eight of cups again. Get to step in, y'all. Just fucking walk away. Just do it. It's not even worth it at this point. It's not even worth it at this point, okay? Uh, you have the high priestess here. What the high priestess is representing, first card out, is the world. 
all right? Things are coming to a close. Lots of chapters are, are, are wrapping up right now, okay? So what you need to do is remain calm, remain focused, remain balanced, remain mentally stable, as mentally stable as you can, okay? Given any certain moment, whatever comes up, like, do your best just to remain calm, cool, and collected, okay? Remember your training. Weird. Three of Pentacles. Wow. The Three of Pentacles can actually represent training. Holy shit. I never thought of it that way. Remember your training, Three of Pentacles. Remember all of the work that you have been doing. Remember all the craftsmanship that you have been painstakingly putting your blood, sweat, and tears into. Your self-mastery. Your conscious steps up this ladder of ascension, right? Remember your training, okay? And do not allow yourself to be deterred, king of wands. This is one of those rare situations where I will encourage you to be as king of wands as you possibly can because that is actually what's gonna drive you forward through this transformation, okay? You have to be, when it comes to working with the universe, and this is something that I learned recently over the last few weeks, you have to be so fucking stern and demanding that you come off as an absolute toxic individual to, to certain situations. I mean, that might be a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but like, it's not time for demurity. Okay, we're not, we're not, uh, no, no. Stand in your vibration. Demand what it is that you want and or need from the universe. Obviously, we're co-creating here, so you have to be flexible, but there is no reason why you should not stand your ground right now. I'm gonna say that again. There is no reason why you should not stand your ground right now. Okay? Be very clear on that. The universe wants you to be very clear on that. We can't have you being wishy-washy at this point, says the high priestess. No, stand, your, stand in your ground, but most of all, stand in your power, king of wands. Okay? As the universe brings these situations and circumstances to a close that are allowing you to walk away from that which no longer serves you. Excellent. Closing Oracle message. Let's do that. We're going to get that from the Lightworker Oracle. Yeah? Cool. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. All right, kids, let's get this closing oracle guidance to finish up this reading for the collective. Yes, closing oracle guidance, please, spirit. Closing oracle guidance, please, spirit, for the collective here. Closing oracle guidance for the collective. Closing oracle guidance. Uh-oh. Oh, shit, there it is. Okay, cool. You have card number eight. Star child. Do you see I'm shaking? It's the coffee. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Star child. The light of the stars exists in you. The earth wants you to share that light with humanity. You are asked to understand that you are meant to be here, that you have spiritual work to accomplish. Give up the idea that you belong somewhere else, to another home in the stars. Instead, let the starlight of your inner being shine here on earth, where it shall make such a positive difference in the world. Fall in love with earth's beauty. She can and will support you in all ways. Uh, okay. Uh, I, the general, cons I, I mean, I understand what this card means. All right, let's read this part. 
Grounding yourself here on Earth enables you to fulfill your life mission. You cannot accomplish this without feeling that you belong here. Your feet need to be planted on the Earth. Relax and trust that you are meant to be here. You have a special light to share and a particular spiritual vibration to live so that the quotient of embodied spiritual light on the earth increases. You are part of an important team of spiritual beings working to assist humanity to grow spiritually. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so freaking much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yeah? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>